What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. So many of you have been receptive to the last two Amber videos I did, but I can tell you just three videos in, and I can already see why I just had to stop watching. It is so frustrating to watch this person. And the title of this video is the core issue most people have. You want everyone to stop talking about this, right? You went online, you cited defamation, all these things. And here you are, three vlogs, two weeks, and this is the focus. And this is you turning it into content more than anyone else, because you continue, Amber, to make it relevant. And then, of course, she says, you know, the only reason she needs to continue discussing this is because it reached her mother. And these charges have been rumored in the past, but now they've actually seen the record. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But she revisits the story about, you know, a cop in Arizona that picked her up, thought she had a warrant. It was another Amber Reed. Those things happen all the time. Amber Reed is a common name. OK, but the reality is if you or your mother were truly worried about these charges, you would have looked into them. But instead, you were dependent on the community looking into your problems and offering resolution. So Sam calls what Amber defines as, quote, the court place and realizes that there's been some type of keystroke error, typographical error, whatever the situation would be. And she thanks Sam for doing this, citing that neither of them were even aware this was on her record. But then she starts to insinuate that, you know, she knows this wasn't done for the right reason. This was done for tea. This was done for drama. It's deeper than that. You know, cause and effect, Amber, don't always have to be the effect on you is negative. And it's amazing to me that she knows the community in which she operates. If she was aware that there had been charges, she would know the prospect of them being brought up as soon as she brought her mother on her page, and she did not need to do that. Amber has spent a lot of time profiting off her family and her past. A lot of Amber's current issues are rooted in Amber's words, unaddressed issues from her childhood. But it only seems to matter now, present day, because her mother is active in her life. She wants to blame someone for causing this issue between them, and that someone is going to be the internet. For years, we've seen Amber go on and on about the issue she had with her parenting. And she gained, monetarily, along the entire way. You know, but now she wants to proclaim, you know, she was never bashing them. Well, you know, to be fair, Amber, you weren't painting them in this positive light by any stretch. And you were clearly using all those past issues to leverage against your current situation and justify where you are. And, you know, you can talk about how you didn't feel you were disrespectful and how you approached those topics, but let's be fair. Those topics that you spoke about are presented by someone who's 33 years old in very poor health, in a state where they really can't even live by themselves. And, you know, I'd like to point out that, again, we really didn't have any issues with this until your mother was basically tasked in being your caretaker. And I would offer, had you not had to move back in with her, it's likely none of this would have been brought up. None of your proclamations about your past would have changed. But now we're sitting here getting these almost sob stories. Okay, your mother didn't hurt an animal, but she did hurt her mother. End of story. Four minutes into this, and she literally says, quote, I'm literally just rambling. After calling out a reaction channel that read off charges, after calling out the other reaction channel for calling to get it corrected, not in the namesake of getting the information accurate, but rather in the namesake of drama, she honestly has the ability to sit there and say, I'm just rambling. If it was truly this important to you, Amber, if it truly mattered, you know, if it really was weighing on you, you would be able to go through point by point, not lose track of your thoughts in less than five minutes. And of course, she transitions this into her audience. Her audience wanted her to talk about these things under the premise that if she did, she could help others. 
She should be talking about her foster care. She should be talking about her family's prior incarcerations. Honestly, Amber, you can't help yourself. How can you help someone else? Case in point, Wasabi looks awful here. But also, the fact that you tucked into this, that you had, quote, gained a couple pounds from, quote, emotional eating, because this sent you through a, quote, rough patch. Let me just say, and, and I know some people will take this the wrong way, but her mother appears to be in recovery, okay? It seems that her mother can function as an adult in some capacity, can enjoy her life without, you know, any mobility issue or major health issue we're aware of. Can Amber truly say the same, right? If you were just out, you knew nothing about these two people, right? Just think about it this way, okay? The context of seeing Amber and her mother just side by side, who would you say just visually is in a worse position in life? I think a lot of people are going to go with Amber. And with that in mind, Amber gets her mother a food journal. And she talks about how much she loves using it and how her mother is going to as well. She closes this out by talking about some sleep issues, getting a deck of cards so she can play solitaire, going over her favorite shows, and the continued, in my opinion, misunderstanding of why she can't sleep at night. Amber, in my opinion, you can't sleep at night because you have nothing to occupy your time, right? You don't do anything that mentally or physically challenges yourself to the point your body needs rest. Okay, planning out meals, shopping on Amazon, putting together Legos and puzzles, that's not really taxing your system. 45 minutes of content in three weeks, dependent on YouTube for income. She buys a tripod and has to read the instructions. She then shows us the tripod, going over how impressed she was with its ability to be a tripod. This is what's going on in her life, and I don't think that can be understated. Buying a deck of cards, buying a tripod, ordering takeout, dealing with her past. That's it. There's not a lot there. She closes the video by trying out a coconut diet Dr. Pepper, eating pre-packed meat and cheese, and then cites somehow she's super tired and needs to go. You know, I, again, would offer that it had been a while since I watched Amber. I used to cover her videos in less than a minute. That kind of used to be the thing that I did was the, the recap in under 60 seconds because there was so little there. And I'm astonished that although things have changed in her life, you know, where she lives, who she lives with, from a content perspective, you know, for somebody with 200,000 plus subscribers, there really isn't a lot going on. If you just look at it from the perception of what this person shows, if I told you there was someone online that was talking about the fact that they got a new deck of cards, a tripod, and tried the new soda, nothing there would help distinguish the age of that person or the mentality of that person. And I think that's one of Amber's biggest issues. You know, what she believes is a full day. What she believes is, you know, mentally exhausting is routine for someone. That's why I think a lot of people look at her and question how she could truly function in society. If she needed to go out and get a job and work overtime and have others depend on her and be responsible, you know, could she do it? Because you see the struggle we have with just sodas, snacks, and what to do in our free time. And I think that's where most people, if you look, really have gotten fed up with this. Because so much of what she's talking about in her future is so directly connected to what's happened in her past and her inability to just move on with her life. You know, I don't mean this to be rude, but it's likely that, you know, her life is half over. And I say that from someone whose life is probably half over as well. At what point... Do you stop looking behind you and realize, hey, I probably have less time in front of me than I have behind me, and I'm not going to worry about any of those things anymore because I have to focus on what's truly important, and that's tomorrow. 
because I've got less tomorrows than I had yesterdays. Love to know your thoughts on this. Appreciate you watching this video. Be back soon as I can with more commentary.